Chapter 1, in which we are introduced to Winnie the Pooh and some bees, and the stories begin. Welcome back to Every Disney Movie Ever. My name is Jess, and I'm watching Every Disney Movie Ever. Today, I'm going to be talking about the many adventures of Winnie the Pooh. I've had this doll, I don't know how long I've had this doll, okay? A long time. As long as I can, well, maybe not as long as I can remember. But... His honey lights up. I forgot to put a battery in it, but his honey lights up, and that's cool. His honey glows, and he's got a little, got a little night hat. It's like Sleepy Pooh. I love him. The Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh is a 1977 animated Walt Disney theatrical release. It's an absolute classic. It's directed by Wolfgang Reitherman and John Lounsbury, editing by Tom Acosta and James Melton. It's written by Larry Clemens, based off the books by A.A. Milne. Milne. I'm so sorry. I don't know how to pronounce that. I'm embarrassed. Let's forget it ever happened. The music is by Buddy Baker and the Sherman Brothers. Wolfgang Reitherman is one of Disney's Nine Old Men, which if you don't know what the Nine Old Men are, they are some of Disney, they are Disney's original animators. Wolfgang has been a part of every Disney classic up until this point. I think this one or Fox and the Hound is his last one. And guys, it's insane. John Lounsbury is also one of Disney's Nine Old Men. They both had a part in directing this film because it's a collection of shorts, which I will talk about later. But they are both Disney's Nine Old Men and they both have touched every Disney classic. And it's just incredible to be watching a film that both of them have had a hand in because Winnie the freaking poo, you guys. Tom Acosta edited this and Robin Hood, that is it for him. He did all Disney and James Melton has a ton of Disney credits. I'm not even gonna touch it. He just does a lot. Larry Clements is a name we have seen before. He worked with a bunch of other writers, but he got them in credit. So I'm just crediting Larry Clements, but please go check out the other people that helped the story of Winnie the Pooh being adapted into these films because they also deserve just as much credit as Larry Clemens, but Larry got the main credit, so I'm only talking about Larry. He worked for Disney before World War II, and then during World War II, he went to, like, help. He didn't go into the war, but he helped with, like, writing and, I don't know, a bunch of service things. And then he didn't go back to Disney right after the war. He wrote for Bing Crosby's radio specials. And then, long way down the line, he went back to work for Disney, helping with the Mickey Mouse Club and the wonderful world of Disney and just all that stuff. And we've seen his name before, mostly on movies that weren't that great, but this is Winnie the Pooh, you guys. The Sherman Brothers go hand in hand with Walt Disney. They wrote so many songs and so much music throughout the years for different Disney films, their most famous being Mary Poppins. And Buddy Baker's the same. He has scored so many Disney films, Apple Dumpling Gang, Davy Crockett, Napoleon and Samantha. He is killing the game. His entire career is basically all Disney films. I'm going to try to say all of these names. Try being the operative word. Here we go. The film stars Sebastian Cabot, Sterling Holloway, Bruce Weatherman, John Walmsley, Timothy Turner, Ralph Wright, John Fiedler, Clinton Howard, Dory Whitaker, Barbara Luddy, Paul Winchell, Junius Matthews, Hal Smith and Howard Morris. Sebastian Cabot is the narrator in the film. He's probably most known for playing Bagheera in The Jungle Book. He was also in Family Affair, Kismet, Checkmate, and Johnny Tremaine. Sterling Holloway is one of Disney's most famous voices. He's Ka in The Jungle Book, The Cheshire Cat in Alice in Wonderland, Roquefort in The Aristocats. He's Winnie the Pooh in Winnie the Pooh. He's one of the most iconic voices. He's also done a few other things. I'm pretty sure he narrated in one of the, you know, Fine, Fancy, Free, or Melody Time. He narrated in one of those. Maybe Ichabod, Mr. Toad, whatever. Ichabod, Mr. Toad, that one. I think he's been in a bunch of them. And then he retired and Jim Cummings took over his part. Jim Cummings still does the voice for Winnie the Pooh to this day. Before I talk about the next actor, I have to tell you guys that The Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh is actually three different featurettes married together into one feature film, originally released in 66, 68, and 74. I will talk more about that later. I have much more information about that for you, but you just have to know that it was three different featurettes at three different times for the next few actors to make sense. Bruce Reitherman is Wolfgang Reitherman's son. He was casted as Christopher Robin in the first 
featurette, and his voice does get dubbed over for the many adventures of Winnie the Pooh, but I still wanted to give credit to Bruce Reitherman, especially because he also plays Mowgli in The Jungle Book. John Walmsley also plays Christopher Robin. He plays Christopher Robin in the Blustery Day sequence and dubs over Bruce Reitherman's in the Honey Tree sequence. He does not play Christopher Robin in the Tigger 2 sequence. And he's most known now for being a multi-instrumentalist and has played with many famous people, including Richard Marks. Timothy Turner also plays Christopher Robin. He's Christopher Robin in the Tigger 2 sequence. Guys, he's British. I never noticed when I was a little kid that Christopher Robin goes from having an American accent to a British one in the same movie. Guys, he does. It was so out of nowhere. Tigger 2, he's like running to go save Tigger. And he's like, oh, hello, Pooh Bear. And I was like, where did the British accent come from? I'm sorry, that was so horrible. I apologize for right now. Hello, Pooh Bear. That was the worst. Um, but that happens and that's hilarious to me. John Fiedler plays Piglet. He's most known for 12 Angry Men, The Odd Couple, The Bob Newhart Show, Robin Hood, and The Shaggy D.A. Ralph Wright was actually a Disney animator and story contributor. This was his only acting role. He only ever did Eeyore. The whole studio always gave him crap for having such a deep, sullen voice. And they said he was the perfect choice for Eeyore, but he's actually given credit and most known for creating the protagonist fails at all his goals joke. In the very first time that Goofy's Glider aired, people lost their minds about the fact that Goofy could not succeed at what he was doing, no matter how hard he tried. It was a very funny joke, and a lot of other studios adapted this, including Warner Brothers, Wile E. Coyote, Sylvester and Tweety, Bugs and Daffy, the heroes. Wile E. never catches the Roadrunner, and we never get sick of watching him try to catch the Roadrunner. Sylvester never catches Tweety, and we never get sick of watching Sylvester try to catch Tweety. Goofy tries to build all these things and show us how to do it, and cannot, for the life of him, show us how to do it. Ralph Wright started that trend. Clint Howard plays Rue. He's Ron Howard's younger brother. He's been in everything Ron Howard has been in the wild country. Everything Ron Howard has made. The Grinch Who Stole Christmas. Most recently, Solo, a Star Wars story. Dory Whitaker also plays Rue, and this is the only thing she ever did. Barbara Luddy plays Kanga. She's been in Lady and the Tramp, Robin Hood, 101 Dalmatians. She's a very distinct Disney voice. Paul Winchell plays Tigger. He's an incredible man. Oh my gosh, I've never been so intrigued by reading about someone in my life. He won a Grammy for playing Tigger. He was known for doing a ton of voices, specifically for Disney. He was on every famous 50s and 60s television show. He invented stuff. He worked with Dr. Henry Heimlich, the guy who invented the Heimlich maneuver to invent the first patented artificial heart that could go in a chest cavity. He invented disposable razors. He invented a retractable fountain pen. He invented a blood plasma defroster. This guy was insane. And he had an estranged relationship with his children, which was so sad to read, but it was just so fascinating to read about him. I highly suggest look up Paul Winchell. He also coined the hoo, like he ad-libbed Tigger's hoo, and he ad-libbed his ta-ta for now, t like the TTFN, ta-ta for now. He ad-libbed that, like this man is incredible. Junius Matthews is Rabbit, and he's most known for playing Rabbit. He was also in a fair amount of other stuff, including Sword in the Stone. Hal Smith plays Owl, and is most known for DuckTales, the Jensen's, the Flintstones, Scooby-Doo, and this. Howard Morris plays Gopher, who is an added character. He was not in the original stories. And Howard Morris was a first sergeant in World War II. He's most known for the Andy Griffith show. He was also a big voice guy. He was in Cow and Chicken. He was the Hamburglar. But he also really started to direct voice actors. My mom's spying on me because my studio's in her house. Mom, you're not on the phone anymore. You're actually here. <laughs> Guys, that was my mom. <laughs> Guys, I love this movie. The Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh has been one of my favorites since I was a kid, and I haven't seen it in a very long time, so I was really excited to watch it again because, first of all, I'm watching it with an adult perspective, so I'm excited to see if I catch things that I never caught, which I did. And I was also just excited because Winnie the Pooh, how can you be sad watching this movie? It is just pure joy. I just caught myself smiling while watching it. I was just like, 
Like, I'm not kidding. Like, I just caught myself grinning like an idiot because the songs are so happy. Just, I'm just a little black rain cloud hovering under a honey tree. Or the, I'm so rumbly in my tumbly. Or the, I'm short, <laughs> fat, and proud of that. <laughs> Which, relatable, Pooh Bear, relatable, okay? And I just, guys, the movie is so great. And it's such pastel colors, like they're very bright and happy and just everything. So like the problems are like problems, but they just handle them so positively. And it's just so wonderful. And I just need y'all to know that Winnie the Pooh is one of the greats. He's so wonderful. I just purchased Winnie the Pooh pajamas because this movie just reawoken my obsession with Winnie the Pooh. So I just need you guys to know it's awesome. All right, so there are a few things I noticed that I wanted to talk about, like things I didn't catch. Like I never caught the Trespassers William thing. Like it's Trespassers Will and then the rest of the sign is missing. So it's obviously like Trespassers will be like shot or Trespassers will, you know, face consequences of some kind. And in this, Piglet thinks it's his like great grandfather or something. He's like Trespassers William, which was hilarious, I was dying. And then the animation in Owl's house when everything's tipping and topping and turvy, that's just so cool. Also, Piglet gives up his house for Owl. Like Eeyore's like, yep, perfect house for Owl. And everyone's like, this is Piglet's house. Eeyore, like, what are you doing? And Owl's like, oh yeah, like I should totally live here. And Piglet's like, uh, and everyone's like, this is Piglet's house, what is this? And Piglet's like, it's fine. I'll find somewhere else to live when he just talked about how much he loved that house and it was like in his family forever. And Pooh Bear's like, you can live with me, Piglet, it's fine. And I'm like, Piglet gives up his house for Owl? What is this? That really upset me. But as a kid, I was just like, oh, okay. But now I'm like, oh my gosh, Piglet. They did Piglet dirty. I feel bad for Piglet. <laughs> Owl tells stories all the time and I never paid attention to Owl's stories and one of them he says a cousin of his laid a seagull egg. And he's an owl, so that's hilarious. Just so many great little things that I noticed. Also, I have to say poor rabbit, but also not poor rabbit. Do you know what I mean? Like, Pooh eats all his honey, Tigger ruins his garden, but then like rabbit's also like a little, you know, little bee, like rabbit has, you know, a little fire that gets him in trouble. You know what I mean? Yeah. Gophers, hilarious, always. Him falling down the hole will make me laugh forever. I laughed every time. I mentioned earlier that this movie was three featurettes, which is absolutely true. They married together three earlier featurettes and added some parts to tie in the stories together. The first featurette was Winnie the Pooh and the Honey Tree, and it was released in 1966 alongside The Ugly Docks Hunt, and it covers the first two chapters of the book. Winnie the Pooh and the Blustery Day was released in 1968. It was the second featurette. It won an Academy Award for Best Animated Short. Wolfgang Reitherman tried to stay more faithful to the source material, which included chapters three, five, nine, and 10 from Winnie the Pooh, and chapters two, eight, and nine from Pooh's Corner. Walt Disney was involved in pre-production of Winnie the Pooh and the Blustery Day, but died, so it was the first animation released after his death. So it, that's crazy. And it won an Academy Award, so that's like dedication to Walt. Winnie the Pooh and Tigger 2 is the third feature edit. It was released in 1974 alongside The Island at the Top of the World, which is also a gem. It covers the third, fourth, and seventh chapters of Pooh's Corner. And then as I said, they married these three featurettes together and added a fourth part, as well as um, parts in between each story to tie them all together to make one succinct film. So Walt would hear his daughter Diane laughing at night and every night he went in, she was laughing at Winnie the Pooh. So since 1938, Walt was very interested in acquiring the rights to Winnie the Pooh so he could make film about Winnie the Pooh. He finally acquired the rights in 1961 and they started to work on the idea of a feature and then Walt randomly decided to make them featurettes instead of a feature and it ended up being for the better. The Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh was also released on a double bill with the littlest horse thieves. Just a couple more tidbits. They tried to keep the sketchy artist style of Ernest Shepard who did the original illustrations in the book. They tried to stay true to him by using ink as the outlines. Um, Walt really loved the scene where Rabbit decorated Pooh's butt, as do I. It's a classic. It's a classic scene. Decorating Pooh's butt as a moose and framing it. That was Walt's favorite scene, apparently. 
The last two chapters in the book are both chapter 10. I checked, I have both pictures. They are both chapter 10, which is crazy. And the Pooh's door in the scene with Tigger changes a lot. He goes from like having a double latch to like the wooden latch to just, his door changes a lot in that scene. <laughs> and that is all I got. That's all I have for the many adventures of Winnie the Pooh. I hope you really liked this video because I loved learning this much about this movie and the people who are in it and the people who helped make it. It was just a really fun researching learning experience. I hope you guys really loved all the information I could give you because wow. And I hate that I've been throwing out so many tens, but I can't help myself because Winnie the Pooh was the best. So 10 honey pots out of 10 honey pots. Our total movie count is <laughs> parent at home cry count is the same. If you want to keep up with what movie I'm watching when, follow me on Instagram or Twitter and you'll find out what movie I'm watching when. I put up videos every Monday and Friday. Until next time, comment, like, subscribe, but I'm going to charge of you are, so you do you. And don't be a half a lump or woozle about it, you guys. Come on. They're black, they're brown, they're up, they're down, they're in, they're out, they're all about, they're fine, they're near, they're close, they're in, they're good, because look, come in, so sir, beware, beware, be a very wary bear. TTFN, ta-ta for now.